Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So, uh, since last episode, I have been busy prepping some stuff, and ectoplasm's been building up. We have 34 in here now, uh, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad. Um, and I've been prepping up some stuff and doing a bit of work down in our power room area. What's going to be our power room after, hopefully after this episode. So, if we pop down here, um, I have expanded this out and I've done a bit of building. We can actually slip through here. This is, um, this is actually window frames, but we can actually slip through the, the very edges of them only. Uh, but if we step in here, these are flat lamps from X-Tones and then just a bunch of lighting. <laughs> and there is a couple things. There is my, still my mining hole because I go down there to mine on occasion. And... Um, the plant gatherer is still set up right here. Um, that's only temporary. Eventually, it's going to be back there. Um, I went ahead and decided to go for a 25 by 25 room. And I've actually got water blocks spaced out uh, periodically. Of course, we don't have to have them, um, but we're going to have lily pads of fertility. By the way, the speed difference with lily pad of fertility compared to not on growing this stuff is massive. Like these, I can harvest and they're back within a few minutes. These, I harvest and it takes you know, closer to an hour. <laughs> it's a very, very big difference, actually. Um, and then eventually we'll have our plant gatherer back here, and then we'll have our plant sower right down there. So that's the long-term plan. Uh, but right now we're still running this measly little plus four range uh, add-on. So nothing too crazy there. Um, over here, this is all pretty much the same. I did move the advanced chemical reactor over by one, and that's because eventually what we're going to have is just a line of chemical reactors right there. And then possibly more, but that's the current plan. Of course, we will probably move from the advanced chemical reactors to, you know, the higher tier ones later on. But, um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's see, I, oh, I upgraded the, um, the tank that is, um, that's making our acid, so it, we actually have a bit more sodium hydroxide dust. I think there's like, uh, if I recall, there's only like 12 up there, but we do have a little bit more sodium hydroxide. And I set up our pyrolease oven. So uh, this is in place. This is actually pretty similar to the one we have up above. We have LV input bus, LV input hatch. We've got an MV energy input hatch, LV, and LV, because there's not really a lot of point, um, generally, I don't think, for most things, um, to actually have anything higher than an LV. The only exception being if you have something that has, um, you know, more than four inputs or more than four outputs, something like that, or needs a lot of fluid, but that's not the case for any of this. So we're just going with LV. And then over here, um, I've actually got a chest set up. Uh, the bottom of this stuff is just stuff that I was using for decorating. Up here, this is the the main parts. Now, I actually don't think that's enough clean stainless steel casings. But if I need to make more, that's fine. I've got a little bit of stainless left. If I need to make more, I can. But uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, because the multi-block that we're going to be building, the distillation tower, is quite large. Um, and this was actually quite expensive. So I just got tired of making these, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So I was like, well, we'll just wing it and see what happens. Uh, if you take a look at the distillation tower recipe, this thing was not cheap. It requires large stainless steel pipes. I actually had to make a new mold for this because it requires um, a large pipe extruder shape. So I had to make one of those, run some stainless uh, to get our large stainless steel pipes. <laughs> it was a lot of stainless between episodes. And then we needed four processor assemblies, which were probably, uh, well, I wouldn't say the easiest part, but they're not bad. Um, they're not too bad to make, so especially since we have a lot of this stuff pretty much automated at this point, so it's not actually all that difficult to do. And then HV machine hole, which we have that automated. Um, the clean stainless steel casings, on the other hand, these require six stainless steel plates for three, and then we also need stainless steel frames. So pretty nasty. Um, the output bus, I went with LV. The output hatches, I went with LV. The input hatch, LV. And the energy input hatch, of course, we had to go with HV for that. Because what we're making requires like 200 and something uh, EU per tick. So we had to go with, um, well, technically we didn't have to. Um, let me pull it up here really, really quick. Uh, if you take a look at methanol, it requires 256 EU per tick. So technically, um, I could have went with, uh, 
MV generators because technically, I mean, they, they have an amperage of two in, uh, you know, just like the blast furnace. So I could have went with MV, but I decided, well, we've already got HV. Why not just go with HV? That way I don't have to um, worry about rigging it up and all that. I can just have one turbine that's creating the power uh, to do this stuff. And then I also made some portable tanks. I made a fluid trash can. I made some nodes, master in, out. Um, just because in this pack it's actually pretty simple uh, to craft these out. Not being terribly expensive. So instead of doing, I could have actually had them on the same routing node system, but then I'd have to make uh, frame parts and bleh, just make another master node have a dedicated line. I made some hardened fluid ducts. These things, not terribly expensive, requiring invar, steel pipes, structural glass, which we have lots of, thanks to all of our tanks earlier on. And then I made some more fluid conduits and reinforced retrievers. I decided to go with thermal dynamics for this, mainly because of the fact that conduits, I don't have my blast furnace set up at the moment. I was actually going to uh, shoot for ender fluid conduits, but I don't have my blast furnace set up for 480 EU per tick. Um, and that's the case for both of these. And yeah, I could set it up for a 480 EU per tick, but the thing is, that would mean that I'd have to, um, well, I guess I've got an HV turbine that I could use. I don't know. I just don't like running HV with that because then I, I basically shuts down my entire AE system if I try to do that. So I was like, well, <laughs> we'll just go with thermal dynamics because it's a lot more um, easily accessible without a bunch of infrastructure to do that because this is, I mean, this is the recipe. And then uh, you can either upgrade, there's a couple ways you can upgrade these, but um, it basically all stems from servos and it's just a combination of Electrum and LV pumps and then Electrum and LV pumps and some destabilized redstone. So they're actually pretty cheap uh, and they work just as well, honestly, uh, for what we want to do today. So um, that stuff's in place. Now, eventually what I think we're going to have is distillation tower here and then we'll have power release oven and probably a second power release oven that's feeding this distillation tower, if not three power release ovens. Because once, I got to thinking, and once we upgrade these, let's go ahead and pull up the methanol again. Uh, this is two seconds per operation for the wood vinegar, and of course, whenever we make wood vinegar uh, through the Pyrolee 7, it makes 3,000 millibuckets. So we're looking at six, uh, six seconds for the distillation tower to process um, the wood vinegar from a single single Pyrolee oven per operation, right? And the Pyrolee oven right now it's going to be taking 32 seconds. Now later on, we'll set it up for the 16 second processing time when we actually need the power. Uh, difference because it's a little bit cheaper on power consumed and it's also half the time but it does require that we feed in nitrogen which is actually very doable for us um, at the moment through the uh, the centrifuge with air which we'll get into that later but right now we don't have that set up but once we do um, if we had three power release ovens running it means that our uh, three power release ovens running with nitrogen, it means that our distillation tower would be kicking constant. Um, so eventually what we might have is three power release ovens feeding one distillation tower. It means we're gonna have a little bit of overflow, but basically that just means the power release ovens will back up uh, and the distillation tower is gonna be able to run at basically maximum efficiency. And then what we'll do is we'll have say another distillation tower past that and then three more power release ovens once we need that much wood vinegar. And so we will just kind of scale up as we go, as needed. And then um, right now we're going to pull trees or, or wood from our current tree farm because we're going to be kind of easing back on needing steam production at all. Um, I've actually been thinking about just totally removing our reliance on steam production and just focusing everything into the bio uh, side of things and just having the steam be there for maybe some other things, maybe some small setups, maybe for uh, the steam cracked stuff, uh, little things like that. Because when we're setting all this up, it's just not, steam's just not very good. 
And it's high time that we move away from that. So, um, But I got this stuff set up. And we're ready to set up the distillation tower. And we should go ahead and get this multi-block set up. And that way we can start building around it. And like I said, I may have to make some more uh, clean stainless steel casings. But that's fine. So let's go ahead and pull up the distillation tower so we can pull up the multi-block easily. Um, the distillation tower block goes right here. And we're actually going to have this inset. And the reason being that way I can kind of... Uh, well, I guess technically, I'm gonna I'm gonna test something. We're gonna see if this works. I'm not sure, not 100% sure how rigid um, the setup is for this. Like, does it have to be exact, or can we make some adjustments? So, what I'm thinking I would like to do, ideally, is we'll have the distillation tower. We'll have the energy input hatch um, setting. I would really like it back here. So we're gonna try setting it up right there. And let's see, we're gonna have, I think what all do we have? We have the item input or the item output. Uh, this actually isn't going to ever output any items. I don't even think we necessarily have to have this, but honestly, making one of these is cheaper than making stainless steel casings to be perfectly honest. So. That's why I went ahead and did that. And then later on, I don't know, we might run something that has item output. So um, we'll just put the item output setting here. And then we're going to have um, our fluid outputs. And we're going to set these up. Just, uh, uh, we're going to go bam, 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 bam. And bam, right there. And then at the top, maybe this will work. I hope this will work. I'm really hoping this isn't super rigid with the, um, because the way it's got it set up right now, it's like output hatch is all lined up and then your output bus there. So all your outputs are right in there. Your energy input hatch is there. Um, the fluid input is actually in the middle on the bottom layer. I'm just not a fan. So we're going to give this a shot and see if this works. So let's go ahead and do stainless steel right down through here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our input be here. Stainless, stainless. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be too short. So one more craft, actually. Okay, so there's our three clean stainless steel casings. So yay. There's that. Uh, actually, let me grab my wrench back out. I didn't mean to throw that back in there. There we go. And so I actually only need two of these, but I'm sure I'm going to make more distillation towers before it's all said and done. So <laughs> that'll be okay. That'll be all right. And I'm hoping that this forms. Fingers crossed that this forms, because that would be awesome. But it looks like it's not going to. <laughs> Okay, well, that's too bad. Maybe it's a little bit more rigid than that. So let's see, the distillation tower wants us to have the output bus here. And hopefully it doesn't have to be EV. I don't think that it does. <laughs> I don't think that that's a minimum requirement. So we'll drop that in right there. Um, the energy goes here, um, which I will probably adjust the way these are facing. Um, a little bit later, but uh, like the energy input hatch, I actually want it facing down. The output bus, we're going to go ahead and have this facing. Oh, I can't make this face down, but okay. Well, uh, the input, the fluid input hatch, and if I'm setting it up here out of curiosity, can I do this? Because if so, that would be okay. If I can just put my output hatches there yes that does work okay so I can move things around just not to the degree that I had them maybe it's uh, maybe there's something specific maybe the the fluid input has to be down here or maybe the energy has to be here or something something was off but we can use LV for it and we were able to move our output hatches to back here so that's the biggest thing. We're not really going to have much in the way of items, at least not right now. Power can go in down, in down there. That's fine. Uh, as long as my fluids can output here 
uh, I'll be I'll be okay so um, okay so then what I want to do it's time that we plug up some conduits some basic conduits here uh, first and foremost our fluid output from the Pyrolease oven it actually needs to come out and we're just going to bring it back to there and we're just going to bring it down and pump it into the bottom of this so we need to come in right there and I'm just going to use uh, standard fluid conduits because it actually does not matter to us um, and we'll be we'll be fine with those and we'll go ahead and set that to extract um, I mean the the speed of these is only five uh, or fifty millibuckets per tick but that's going to be plenty because this is going to take at the least 16 um, seconds to run. So if we just have a fluid conduit line per distillation tower, we'll be fine. I mean, I could, I could uh, upgrade that to like advanced mechanical pipes or something, but I think this will be fine. Okay, so that's there. Um, the item output, we'll deal with that in a little bit. The input hatch and the input bus. The input bus is the only one that's important to us right now and we'll deal with that in just a moment as well. Now back here um, we are going to switch over to thermal piping for this and let's go ahead and grab our portable tanks, grab our fluid ducts, grab our reinforced retrievers uh, and I've got to, I'm gonna have to jump start this the big question is, where do we want the tanks to go? Okay, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's grab our output node, our input node, and our master node. And, oh, I forgot my node router, didn't I? That's fine. I want to grab a couple things. I want to grab um, our turbo... I don't have any inventory space. I'm just going to put away some things here. Um, I'm going to grab our turbo steam engine. And... Uh, let's pop over here. And I'm going to grab a couple things out of here. Uh, first up, let me grab some kits, and I've actually got my system set up so they can auto-craft these. Let's go ahead and order like four more, and let's go ahead and grab another portable tank as well. Okay, so we're going to have six of these in total, and... Um, I also want to grab, well actually while I'm up here, let me go ahead and set this down and let me go ahead and upgrade, actually I'm going to upgrade two of these because I've got the kits for it. And I'm going to grab an advanced steam turbine and I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to fill one of these tanks up for right now um, and this one's going to be filled up with steam. I'll put that in my bag because it's going to make me float away. And let me grab one of these advanced mechanical pipes. And then the last thing we're going to need to do is grab our node router. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab an input node. And we're going to set this input node. Um, let's see, this is the higher priority one, right? Yeah, priority of 10. This is where I want to put it. So we're going to put the input node setting right there and we're just going to grab that as a connection I'm kind of doing a lot of uh, since since routing nodes are so cheap in this pack um, I'm kind of doing dedicated lines a lot for this pack whereas normally it's all one big system um, I just find it easier in this pack to uh, to do it this way and I tell you what one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break this off break that off and we're gonna switch the placement we're gonna have the input for items there um, and the input for fluids there because I can facade that I can't facade this is the main reason I'm doing that so and then let's go ahead and set up our output node and our master node connect that connect that so there we go that's going to start stocking up on mineral wood. And if I need to speed that up, we can do that either with another tree beacon or with astral sorcery. You know, we can speed that up. Then what we're going to do, that's got wood. Let's go ahead and jumpstart this. And so all we're going to do for this is we're going to set up our advanced steam turbine. 
sitting there for just a moment. It's not going to stay here very long, but, and actually I think what I could probably do is grab this out, set that there, and then just right click it. Yeah, there we go. That's got power now, and was there a circuit that I needed for this? Yes. Uh, configuration 3 circuit. Okay, I forgot about that. Okay, so we're just going to plop that in there. There we go. This should be running now. It is. Running perfectly. Okay, and hopefully it doesn't eat through all that steam. I mean, it is probably going to eat through most of it, to be, to be perfectly honest, but that's okay. And this is going to produce charcoal. We're going to have to deal with that. We'll deal with that in just a minute, though. Will there be enough steam? Come on. No! <laughs> It was right there. Okay, one second. Go, we'll get this running for just a minute. And then as soon as this one runs out, I'm going to switch it with this tank. All right, and this should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off now. Put that away. I'm going to waste, uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm not going to waste steam. Okay, but if we look in here, there's a little bit of fluid that ran through there and has ran into the distillation tower. Now, I don't know for sure that it's going to be enough to get it over here because we need a bit to get this started. Yeah, we actually got um, almost 3,000 in here. There's just a little bit in the pipes. Um, okay, so that works out. So let's go ahead and pull off this advanced steam turbine. This is jump started enough. I don't need this anymore. Now we have to run the distillation tower. And um, I think this actually is going to take a bit of steam. Uh, 10,240 EU. Okay, so it's actually not that bad. This was 40,000 for this one. Oh, but you know what? I'm actually going to need to pump this through once more because I actually need a little bit more because it only makes 300 per operation and not... Uh, I'm not going to have enough. So I'm going to have to make one more batch of wood vinegar um, to go to the distillation tower. To have enough to actually produce our first bit of um, to produce our first bit of biofuel. Okay, now there should be enough in here for us to actually use. Yeah, there's 5,000. That's plenty. That is plenty. Okay, so then what we're going to do our turbo steam engine. I'm gonna have to set this up for just a minute, and I'm actually not for sure if I can just put it here if it's gonna feed its power in. So we're gonna test it real quick. So it is running, and you could say that it did actually run a little bit of that. Um, so we should be able to find, if we go over here and we look, there's some acetone, there's some methanol, there's some ethanol, there's some water, there's some acetic acid. Okay, so now what we need to do, let me get a little bit more steam though, because we're going to have to run a little bit more. Uh, but I noticed it did stop up, like it didn't it didn't accept any more steam or power or anything. Yeah, there's still energy in here, so it's not feeding it in, so there is liquid still uh, in there. So now what we need to do is we need to set up our portable tanks. And we won't be able to set up all of these right this second, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to run a fluiduct line. And, um, I mean, I could set them in right here which would actually be kind of convenient. Honestly, I probably should move them over to here so they're just closer. Um, but if we set up a portable tank there, 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 and I don't want these to output, don't want it to output. And let me go ahead and drop this here so I can have some steam available to it. Um, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and run these up. These are just uh, opaque hardened fluid ducts. And then we'll go ahead and put a retriever there, retriever there, retriever, retriever. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull from um, pipes and it's going to basically pump liquids over into these. And actually, one thing I need to do. Let me pull off. Um, let me pull off this one for just a minute. 
because I'm going to need this to filter things. So the acetic acid, let's go ahead and grab that out. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to dump it. Oops. I'm going to dump this into the filter here. I'm going to set it to whitelist acetic acid. And then we'll just dump that right into there. And there's more acetic acid. And then we'll go to the next one. The next one is water. Um, we're actually going to be trashing that, so I'm going to skip that one for just a second. Ethanol. I went ahead and grabbed our kits, too, so I could upgrade these things. Ethanol is going to go here. No, I don't want you to output, but thank you. The methanol. Methanol is actually going to go there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab uh, this. This, we're just going to switch these. Acetic acid can go up there. And then we'll have methanol right there. Um, oh, and I need to be adding these to the filters. So whitelist methanol. Whitelist ethanol. Whitelist acetic acid. And then the last one is acetone. Just put that into there. We'll go ahead and plop that on the ground. Hit that with the other hardened upgrade kit. And um, let's see, we're also going to have to set up water. I'll get that in just a second. Uh, now, if you recall, if we pull up the distillation tower for methanol, and we take a look at this, uh, if you recall, there's actually six liquids. We are going to set that up. Uh, the methyl acetate, we're, right now we're not making that. Um, actually, out of curiosity, what all is that used for? I'm sure it's used for things. There's glue, oxygen, hydrogen, with carbon. And that's it. Uh, but we are going to want uh, glue. Well, we can use acetone for that too. And we can make it that way, which is a whole lot easier. Do we need... <laughs> Because uh, right now we're not actually producing this. Um, I mean, I guess it's just another free liquid. So I probably will set it up just so we have it. But um, what we have to do is we have to build the distillation tower taller. Like right now we have the minimum size. Um, because I just want to get this up and running. And honestly, I was tired of making stainless, but if we added another layer and basically raised the top, so the next, we would add one more layer that's hollow and then have the top up there and we have our output hatch, then it would make that six liquid and it would output um, the methyl acetate. Now, if we, if we did this method, we would need a seventh layer to produce the methane. So it's basically running in this order. So if, you know, if we didn't have it tall enough, we couldn't get methanol or we couldn't get acetone. Um, I don't think that six is the minimum size. I think you could actually make it smaller if you wanted to, but uh, we definitely want these things. So, um, but let's go ahead and set up our fluid trash can. That's the next thing that I wanna do. It's the last item actually in the chest that we haven't, we haven't set up yet. And let me just grab a bucket here. Let me grab a little bit of this water and um, let's see, let me pop around this really, really quick. I'm actually going to, uh, here in just a second, I'm going to change up the way that our stuff's set up. So let's go ahead and do that. And we are going to whitelist water and ignore. Okay, dump that in there. And then we should be able to just plug this up. Um, like I said, I'm actually going to move these over in just a second because we don't actually need them here. But for right now, if we just plug all of these up and then bring them over like that, it should be pulling out all of the fluids. Um, right now there's still acetic acid in there. If we give it just a second, boom, there goes that. And um, yeah, it's probably process. Well, it might be processing. No, there's not enough wood vinegar. Okay, so now's the time when we can move all this stuff over. And change this layout to a a way that makes a little bit more sense for us because the way that we've got it right now is silly and we don't like the silliness so um, 
Let me go ahead and just pull that off. We're going to set that, 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 that. And we'll set them in that direction. That way we, we don't even need extra um, extra fluid ducts or anything. So, And there we go. Yeah. Well, we do need two up here, but that's just so that all this connects up nicely. Um, okay, so that's all plugged up. And that's pretty much ready to go and we do have we should have enough methanol now um, inside this tank over here to actually jump start our system so let me go ahead and grab this let me grab that and I do still have one more tank of steam available and actually there's gonna be one more tank that sits like right here actually I might move this up yeah, that probably would have been a good idea in the first place, so... Okay. And then whenever we get that sixth liquid, we'll add it right here. So, there we go. That's where our liquids are going to go. I'm going to have to put some blocks here and do a little bit of facade work. That's fine. Eventually, there's actually going to be fluid storage. Uh, bus is probably plugged up right there, maybe, or... Um, or something. Some Maybe something else, I don't know. Depending on how I end up setting this up for long term. My goal is actually not to trash any of this. Actually just to store it all up. Um, but we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so our methanol. Let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to have to run it over uh, to the chemical reactor. Because this is going to need our methanol uh, coming in over here. So what we're going to do. Honestly, I think I'd rather have mechanical pipes for this. So let me go ninja some from up here because we've got some set up actually that we don't need and it should be enough. Um, I'm looking at these right here especially. I've still got them coming up here because I had a turbine set up that we were going to use for another project and um, we didn't end up using it for that project so I'm actually just going to pull off these as well. I don't know if eight's going to be enough but I've also got these. which I can steal these off. If I, if I need to move this stuff around, I can, but I'm just gonna steal this off for right now. Well, for long term, but there we go. There's 22, that's gonna be plenty. I need to make up a, a big batch of these because they're just, they're good for transferring fluids. Um, now, right now we could use conduits. That's actually a lot of the reason I made these fluid conduits is for moving this stuff over um, because it would be fast enough for right now, but long term it probably wouldn't be fast enough, so. I'd rather just go with something a bit better. So let's go ahead and just run this. Okay, right there's our methanol. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull this out. And just pull it down through to here. Yeah, there should be enough pipes here. And right up to there, and then we'll go ahead and grab our configurator and we're gonna set this to pull so it should be coming up to the chemical reactor now and actually I need to uh, grab this and let me change the output for this to the right hand side there we go so the methanols came in here and now what I need to do is provide this with a little bit of power and we've got uh, well this is the advanced chemical yeah, we'll just set up our advanced steam turbine for just a second. Have it sitting right there is fine. And we'll just do that. Should be enough power, right? Yeah, looks like it stopped. There we go. We have some glycerol and some biodiesel. Awesome. <laughs> so our system is now jump-started enough that we do have um, a little bit of our fuel, which is actually, once again, that's enough for a million and a half EU. Okay, so now, now that the system's jump started, it's time to start moving over to our new engines. So, fun times. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do here is, I'm also going to have to make up, um, actually I'm going to have to make a, a couple more retrievers, because we're going to start pulling out that glycerol, as well as the biodiesel, and start uh, storing that. Yeah, I think we'll use retrievers for it. So, and then we've got our two portable tanks, which will be for the biodiesel and the glycerol. And we're going to have this stuff sitting uh, for storage purposes, basically to view it. We're going to have our portable tanks set up here and here. And this is where our new liquids are going to sit. 
And then let me go ahead and grab a bucket of the glycerol. That's going to sit, uh, we'll say right here. And then we'll grab a bucket of the biodiesel, which is going to go right here. Okay. And yeah, let me go craft up. Um, well, for starters, I'm going to need an HV fluid generator for this. I'm going to need an MV fluid generator for this. I'm going to need um, an MV fluid generator here. And then I'm going to need a few more MV. Probably, I'll probably do MV fluid generators for our RF. And that way we can start moving into spectra coils. Now, one thing I'm curious about, do we have... Uh, could have swore there was like a, a disassembler. Maybe that's not a thing in this pack. Because I was really hoping to actually break down our old steam turbines. Because we're not going to be using these for much of anything, but maybe we can't. Oh, which means I'm going to have to make one of these. <laughs> More stainless. Yes. Okay. Well, that's not hard to make. It's just kind of a pain. Uh, for the most part, I do have this automated, so I can just order pieces, so it's not too bad. But I'm going to get a bunch of turbines made. It's going to be a little while. I'm going to cut for a bit, and um, and I will be back in just a bit. Okay, I was only able to make uh, five advanced diesel generators. <laughs> I actually wanted more, but five's a good starting point. And then we've got one turbo diesel generator. And I also crafted up some more GPS markers, got a fluid transfer node, made another portable tank, uh, made two reinforced retrievers, and um, yeah, ordered some more kits. And um, actually, David Miller just brought up in the comments, right as I was about to start recording this, uh, the plant interactor. This, I think, is the machine I was thinking of last episode whenever I was talking about um, I was thinking that we could just right click to harvest the, the stuff and I, I think I was thinking of the plant interactor and uh, not the plant harvester. So we're actually going to make this um, and we'll maybe use the harvester a bit later. Okay so there's our plant interactor. So we're just going to switch to this and I'm actually going to change the layout slightly of what we've got at the moment. Um, now the plant interactor if there's no space in it it will drop it on the ground so we will want the void upgrade in this um, but that you know that's fine that's okay so let's go ahead actually and grab this plant gatherer we'll just pull that up and we're actually going to um, we're gonna come over to here and we're gonna set this up for the more long term in fact so what we're going to do is we're gonna pull this up I'm actually going to set it up over here. Originally, I was going to set it up on the the other side over there, but I think I'm actually going to put it over here, um, I do believe. And then let me go ahead and grab our lily pad of fertility, and let's move that over to here. Now, one thing I did not think about, though, um, whenever I was setting up this farm between episodes, is these actually only accept up to a max tier of 11. So I'm not going to be able to do a 25 by 25. It's going to be a 23 by 23 farm. But what that means is that the edges aren't going to get harvested. So there'll always be some, at least some soybeans that are sitting there, uh, which is okay. I don't mind. I don't mind if it's a little bit bigger and there's always going to be some soybeans sitting there. I don't mind it at all. So uh, let's see. Our working area is all the way out to here. And so technically I could build farms on top. What I'll probably end up doing is actually build farms below this, maybe. And um, have the plant interactor maybe down below, even. I could do that right now, in fact. This could actually work out really, really nice. And let's say put the plant gatherer here. And say show working area. I'm sorry, not the plant gatherer, but the... Um, interactor and we drop in the range add-on and say show working area yes it's gonna cover all of that so really I could block I could drop it one more block even so if I put it right here it's gonna cover all of our soybeans and we can put another farm beneath this one 
that it can it can uh, pull from if need be. So that might be what we do. And the power usage on this, I'm actually not sure what it is, but um, the fluid. I wonder if that means it's going to get sludge. If so, that's fine. But we're going to go ahead and hide the working area for right now. And what we're going to do is, let's pop over here. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to pull up all these conduits. Because we actually don't want these. And let me grab uh, that. I'm just going to toss that up there for right now. And that means we're not going to need the plant sower. So I'm just going to put that away for the time being. And we're going to pull up all these conduits that are down through here. And so right here is our plant interactor. Let's go ahead and we'll pull the conduits from here instead. And we'll just say extract is always active. And you can pull out. Because um, what this is going to do is it's going to right click the crops instead of breaking them. Um, which is ideal for us. Because these can all be harvested with a right click just as well as a left click go that's all plugged up now and we'll see if this produces sludge if it does we'll deal with it if it doesn't then that's cool too um, I'm actually not in need of the sludge it's just if we make it that's fine if we don't make it that's fine <laughs> like I, I couldn't care less either way so uh, we will have stuff that produces sludge long term so I'm gonna have to go back there and fix the wall I'll do that later um, Okay, so now what I want to do, let's go ahead and set up the fluid ducts first. And so we're going to have fluid duct, fluid duct, fluid duct, and then we're going to have retriever there and there. And then let's go ahead and bucket that, add that in, whitelist. And go ahead and ignore redstone, and then we'll grab this, add it, whitelist, ignore redstone, and then boom, there's our six buckets of biodiesel. They're getting moved over. And then if I add additional chemical reactors, all I have to do is add, of course, fluid duct, fluid duct, fluid duct, and we'll be all set. That should be good. Okay, so then what I want to do is, and I'm going to have to get power into these. That's actually going to be the worst part because we'll focus on this one right now. What I might end up doing later on is maybe changing these. Once we have some better power upstairs, maybe change these over to ender fluid conduits and then we can pull out the liquid and then uh, pull out the liquid from there or maybe pump it over to here and then pull out the liquid with ender conduits or something. Um, that'll be okay. We'll cross that bridge a bit later. Uh, so for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up an advanced diesel generator setting. Um, We'll have it sitting there. That's fine. And then we're going to set up our fluid transfer node. We'll have this thing sitting right there. And we're going to have our advanced mechanical pipe sitting right there. And our configurator sitting right there. So there's our fluid. Boom. And um, then what I want to do is go ahead and we'll just hit this with a GPS marker. We'll shift right click, we'll drop that into the fluid transfer node. Boom. There we go. Oh, it drained every bit of it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> That's no good. That means I'm gonna have to jump start like all this again. And uh, let me pull out this. <laughs> let me pull this out for just a minute. I probably shouldn't have done that because now I can't get it out of there. Like it's pretty much stuck. Um, um, but you can see it barely used any biodiesel to fill this thing up with EU. Like it just crammed it full with no problem at all. Well, see, I'm going to grab this gold cable from here. I'm going to grab two copper cables. And then what we'll do, the copper cables are just going to connect there. So this has power. Yay. And then um, over here, the power release oven is going to need some power. So what we'll do is we'll just have this direct connect, actually. So there we go. That's feeding into there. And then we're going to have um, the turbo diesel generator setting right there. And then we'll just have gold cable connect that up like that. Um, and I don't want this to connect. 
at all. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up this portable tank because I'm going to need it for steam because of my big oops. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me jump start the system. I'm not going to have this pull out and go anywhere at the moment. Um, it's just going to go in, the, the biodiesel is going to go in here and then um, we're going to manually bucket a little bit of it over. Basically one bucket will be enough to jump start this system. That's what I meant to do. I just kind of did it out of order. So whoops.